Do you want to shoot Instax with a vintage camera like this Hasselblad 500CM? Let's talk about the options. Got 99 problems? This might be one. Me. Hello, it's me. I'm Steven Allen. How are you doing today? Hit the subscribe button if you like vintage cameras and let me know what your favorite one is. I'm going to be talking more about vintage cameras on this channel, so subscribe. Subscribe! Subscribe! There is a way of shooting Instax film with a Polaroid film back and a Hasselblad medium format camera, but we'll get to that later. So this has to be one of my favorite cameras of all time at this moment. It is a fully manual camera. It's a Hasselblad 500cm. This is the camera that went to the moon, allegedly. I'm not going to get into that. It was a camera like this. It wasn't this particular camera, like this exact camera. This camera did not, if this camera went to, it's that classic camera, medium format. I like that it's really modular. So people think today about modular cameras being red cameras. This is kind of like that old classic modular camera, the Hasselblad. So the candle, the candle is an issue. We'll have to make sure it's on lit next time next time yes pretty much everything on this you can change upgrade modify but i really like that you can put different backs on it so this is a film back that you can put 120 film in you can put a little adapter in here and use it with 35 millimeter film. This is actually a 220 film bag, but you can still put 120 film in it. Pro tip, the 220 film bags are cheaper than the 120 film bags because a lot of people think you can't put 120 film in it. You can. I can do a video about that if you want me to. You can also use a digital back. I actually want to go out and shoot with this digital back soon. So stay tuned, subscribe so you can see that. This is the P20. And there are other ones, but I really like that this has a square sensor. Slide it on, lock it down. And now this is a uh, camera that you can use in this century and get some digital photos. You don't have to scan anything. It's just digital already. Has a little memory card slot there. And Jerry and I are stagehands. Hmm. There is a Polaroid film back that you can use with your Hasselblad, and it looks like this. It's pretty big, but it's not for those regular Polaroids. Not this type of Polaroid. And this you can find super cheap on eBay because a lot of people think that you can't use this for anything because Fujifilm FP100C was discontinued, but you can actually use this to shoot with your Instax. And that's why I got this. So you just slide it on here, find a little groove for it, push this in to lock it into the back. Now this has a little built-in dark slide holder in the back of it right there. So that's nifty. So the thing is, when you're shooting with FP100C, this is the area that gets exposed, this whole area on a camera that's made for shooting with this type of instant film. But with the Hasselblad, since it's six by six, you're only getting this much exposed with the lens. You just end up having this huge dark area. So really people just used this film back to test their camera settings, to test the lighting, to test their flash, to test their subject, what they were going to shoot so that when they actually shoot with their 120 film, they're not wasting it. So if you find it on eBay now, it's super expensive, but I was able to get a bunch of these empty containers off of eBay for a few dollars. This is just uh, what's left over after you finish shooting your FP100C. What I noticed is that this size right here is really close to Instax square. <laughs> Subscribe, subscribe, subs subscribe, do, please. Okay, please do, do it. Thank you. Subs subscribe is what I'm saying. That's what I want you to do. If you want to do it, to subscribe. So this is an Instax square and you can see that this size is 
very close. So what I did is I took a little piece of gaff tape like this so that I could feel in the dark because this is something you have to do in the dark. I can do a video about this if you would like for me to walk you through how you actually do this. But having this little container here, you have to expose the back of your Instax film. You expose the front for Polaroid. And you just slide it in like that. You don't have to tape anything down. If you don't have one of these, you can tape this into this container, but you'd have to do it in the dark. But all you have to do is just have this in a dark bag, slide it in. You know it's even because you have this little gap tape here as a guide. And then you just open it up, slide it in like so, close it, and then do all of that in a dark bag. Now you have this and you can just stick it on your camera, take your photo. All you have to do after this is develop it. So you just put it into an Instax camera or into an Instax printer and just print it out. You just need for it to go through the rollers and you're not actually going to expose anything on that image because then you would get a double exposure. I actually got uh, two printers. I have an Instax Square printer, and I have an Instax Mini printer. If you're wondering if you can use Instax Mini film in an Instax Square printer just to develop, not to actually take the photo or anything like just to develop it, you can't. The film gets stuck in the rollers. Maybe you can have a 3D printed adapter. I'm not sure, um, but it got stuck for me, so. I did notice that with my Hasselblad, this Instax film has an area that is a little bit larger than this. So you do get a border around it, and I was getting a border at the bottom because this sits a little bit higher, and I wasn't getting a border at the top, so it just looked a little bit kind of like, it wasn't really that pleasing to look at. So I added a little piece of gap tape here to block off the exposure so you have an even border at the or kind of even at the top and at the bottom and since this is also a little bit um, wider than this area here uh, you do get borders on the sides now you can see in this photo that the border on the left and the right isn't exactly even in this test photo because and it shoot a few different photos so I could get the border right. And I think I have it now, which is why I like having this particular unit in here. So you can see this is one of my earlier test shots. There's no border at the top, but there is a border at the bottom. Let's watch and see what makes people like one person and not another. So I have an Instax Square printer. I chose to get an Instax Square printer instead of a camera because I wanted to really shoot with this or with my SX70 camera or any other type of vintage camera as opposed to one of the more modern Instax cameras. What's nice about this is that you can not only develop your Instax photos that you use with this method, you can also print out any photo at all that could be on your phone or computer. So that's super nice and cool. You can just print out a photo, any photo that you want. So I really like the square shape because it really reminds me of a, you know, a traditional Polaroid. But that is the Instax Mini. So the only thing that I did with the Instax Mini is I just slipped it in like so, and then I would just feel in the dark to make sure it's kind of evenly spaced like that. So when you take a photo with the Instax Mini, you will still get the border at the bottom and at the top, but you won't have any borders on the sides. And this film is much cheaper than this film. The price has gone down for this, but this is still a lot cheaper. I just like the look of this more, but this is kind of warming up to me. I, I kind of do think this is kind of cool too. So it's pretty cool what you can do with technology these days. People say that, right? Check out my music. Fight fire with my heart Make me come apart I need you out of my brain Buy, play, stream, hear it now. A few years ago I started Googling to see if I could find an Instax film back to use with my Hasselblad 
500 cm, the the B series. And I couldn't find anything except for people doing at home DIY, modifying Fujifilm, Instax cameras, and sticking it on the back of a Hasselblad. And then I also did see some uh, film backs for the Mamiya, but I didn't see anything for the Hasselblad until last year when I saw the Hasselback. And last year was 2020, so you can see where this is going. I missed their Kickstarter, but it was successful. According to the website on Kickstarter, it is called the Hasselback Portrait. The Hasselback Instax Back. They do have an Indiegogo where you can pre-order the film back, but I waited because there was a whole global pickled pepper happening. So the Hasselback Portrait, the Hasselback Instax Back, you can still pre-order it now it's about like 230 something dollars. And it was a really cool concept because you could use Instax mini film with it. You did have to use a special adapter with the viewfinder so that you could grab the right focus. Other than that, you were able to take the photo and actually develop the photo by pushing it out immediately. So this was supposed to be delivered, I think at first it was June or July that I saw of last year that they were going to start shipping it out. And then it switched to October because of what was happening in the world. It was like, okay, that's reasonable. And then now they're saying it's May of this year that they will send it out and they completely changed the design. First it was shooting with Instax Mini and it would be this type of orientation. So now, it's with uh, Instax Square, which is awesome because I like the square, but you don't get this, this setup. The image will look like, will look like this. This is so annoying to me. I feel like if you're taking an instant photo and it's square, it should be like this, not like this. This is super annoying. So they changed how they're designing it. Um, they made updates so you don't have to use a special adapter when you're focusing anymore, which that's cool. But a lot of people in the comment section are saying some things that are kind of heated, like they want their money back. They think that this isn't legit anymore. And I don't know. I really would like to have this film back, but I don't think it makes sense to invest in this situation before they actually start sending it out to people. So I guess I will wait until May of this year to see if they send it out to anyone. If they do, then I'll place an order. If they had this set to go and it looked like they had a working film back that they could send out to people, and it actually does say on here, they said by 2019 we shipped, past tense, our camera to more than 1200 backers all over the world. And I don't know if that's true or they meant to say like by 2019 we will ship, I looked on YouTube to see if anyone made a review on this film back and I couldn't find anything except for the creators showing a demo of it. And then I looked on eBay to see if any people were reselling it for any reason and I couldn't find that. I couldn't find any past purchases of this either. So if you have the Instax back, let me know because I wanna know what's with the what what, you know? Is it working? Does it exist? Does anyone have it? It seems like they have the difficult part already figured out. Um, I know that the global situation has slowed things down, but I think they would have a really nice product that a lot of people would buy. I would definitely get it and make a YouTube video about it if um, they made it available. So anyway, I'll keep looking into this and I'll keep you posted on whether this comes out. And if it does, and I, I decide to place an order, I'll make a video about it. Or if you want to send me, if you want to send me a copy of this, I'll use it. I'll use it. This Polaroid film back was not made for Instax film. So it makes the process of shooting Instax with this tedious. You can only shoot one Instax film at a time. If you want to see like a walkthrough of how you actually load in your Instax film into one of these and then develop it with one of these printers, I can do a YouTube video about that. Just let me know. Do you like film or digital more? I like to use them together, but let me know your thoughts. 
The plan is to post two times a week, Monday and Thursday. We'll see again, we'll see. I am doing my best, I really am. <sighs> Subscribe to this YouTube channel and give this video a thumbs up and do something to the bell, tap it. Visit my website, perlin.com, where you can find out about my art, music, clothing. I made the shirt, blog, store, merch, and all of the good stuff and more. And until next time, take a little time to make art and be brilliant. I'll talk to you later. Bye. People say that, right? Stumbling over words.